So here I am in the shop with some wood that I'll use to make the pattern. This is pine, and I decided the pine would be too light, too, too thin for the job. Because here, the part that I'm trying to replicate, it's pretty small right here. I don't know what that is, a half to three quarter inch. And when you split that in half to have the two halves for the mold, it gets pretty wicked thin and the pine won't hold up to that. It'll break and I don't want it to break in the middle of making that part. So I've chosen some, what I think is oak, found it upstairs and I ripped it on the saw here. The saw only goes up that far so I went in one side then came in the other. And now what I'm going to do is run it through the planer. It's the most important surface is in here, here and here, which will be the inside of the pattern that I'm making. And then I'll put some pins or dowels or something to fix these two to each other. And then we'll make the exact mold that this will be. If I flip these on the side, this is the important dimension. You can see how much I have to work with here. This will be cast like so. You can see on both sides there's only about about an eighth of an inch, uh, maybe a little bit more. So I have to make sure when I'm planing I don't take off too much. And then uh, we'll go to the sander and we'll see how close we can get to this part here. So now I have my boards here. They're all planed and cut. And I can put my piece on top like this. Pretty well right to the lines. What I've decided I'm gonna do is take this little drill bit and go root and root right at the thick parts and nail the two together with this tiny nail on those two parts. And that should hold it together well enough so that I can cut there and then sand the pattern. So I'll let you know how that turns out. So I've drilled the holes, I have these little nails, and they line up just perfectly in here. They go in smoothly, whoop, right through, you can see that one went right into the other hole. Now I'll take this punch here, and I'll drive it home right through there so it's not visible right at the surface so I can sand and take some off without hitting that nail. Do the same thing with that guy, make sure they're, this guy's in line first. Yep, and push it right down. So now I'll just... Line up this punch. Right at the surface there now. A little bit more. Should be good. And it won't come through the bottom side. That's perfect. So now I'll go over to the sander and we'll start shaping this funky part. So I got a bit ahead of myself. And I was thinking, man, it's a shame not to have a bandsaw because cutting a funky shape like that would be perfect on a bandsaw. And then I remembered, scroll saw. The reason it's down here, not on the top table, is because it's pretty rough. But it works. And so if we go over here and see the product, see the shape. Oh, look at that. Isn't that the cat's pajamas? Look at that. Now it takes an awful lot less sanding. So I'll move over to that sander there and see how it goes. I'll give you a little update. Here we are. Use the scroll saw to cut both directions. Now this thing's looking a little bit rough. But it definitely saved a lot of time making this shape from just having to do everything on the sander. So here we are. Lots of dust in the air. There's the original part, here is the pattern, we're getting there, we're getting there, gotta take a little bit more girth off this, and here, gotta make the acorn cap looking thing, you can see the nail kind of starting to come through there, I have a feeling this little thing will have a hard time, but other than that, the bulb is for the most part good, and uh, We'll see what's next.
So here we are. Got the mold there. Got the crucible here. It's a cut propane can. Gotta be very careful when you're making those. This is the little furnace. It's just normal red bricks. And I have a squirrel cage fan with an old uh, overhead oven vent thing hooked up to it. So you turn it on. And then you can regulate the speed of the fan. And a whole lot of cans. And I'll be using charcoal for the heat. There you go, got coal in it. Put some starting liquid torch. Turns out on the slowest speed, the fan is still too strong, so I have to back it way off. The cans are going quick. One of the dangers that sometimes occurs when these cans pop, when they start to melt, there's a certain something flammable inside and they'll go pop. So I have this can of whatever it is. Let's see how it goes. There it is. <laughs> We're just below the halfway line of that can. So I've used a bag and a bit of the other one to get a little bit less than half of that container. So it ain't much, but it's honest work as they say. See that last can's about done. So I'm gonna grab my glove and this channel lock and big bent spoon and fish all the gunk off the surface and then I'll bring it over here we'll fill up the mold and whatever's left I'll pour in this brick make a nice little ingot We're really getting the heat cooking now ready to pour I see smoke blowing out the bottom of the furnace Hope that doesn't mean I broke the crucible Getting close. Oh jeez, a big old puck of scrap in there. Wow. If you look at the crucible, it wasn't feeling all that great. Probably would have blown out if I kept going. See all the cracks around the bottom and it's kind of bulged. There's a the mold. It's been about 15 minutes. There we 
go. Hmm. It's looking not half bad. The surface finish is a bit rough. The sand I used should have been more fine. So feel the heat off it big time. Hmm, really in there good. There we go. So I'm here in the blacksmith shop. I'm going to take the angle grinder and cut off these and then we'll take the rest of the handle to the grinder, the bench grinder, and go and take off the seam here. That was a lot harder to grind through than I expected. Take the rest and we'll clean that up. And after I do the edging, I think I'm going to leave it like this because I like this cast finish. But if you're a bit more picky, you could sit around with a chainsaw file and whatever else and clean it all up nice. Here it is, fresh from the grinder. Clean that off. It's a bit of a dink and went too far in here, so there's a bit of a notch there. Might fill that with a weld or braze or something. See, removed all along here, all along the side. So the final step for this guy is just to use a big hand file, clean it up until I feel fit. And the next stage will be to flatten the bottom and drill a hole and thread that hole so that it can match the original exactly. But that doesn't have to do with casting, so that'll have to be another video or something. There we have it, the original cast iron part, the hardwood foundry mold, and the new part. Did some hand filing on it. Pretty good, just need some paint, some threads. Next video I plan on showing where this is going to be used in a line shaft driven wood shop that makes hand washboards. So after a good day of casting, time for some cookies and milk. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.